let's go and take a look um, at this function. We have f of x equals negative 2x times x minus 3 squared times x plus 3 cubed times x minus 6. Now, we did recently do these in limits, right? So we're a little bit familiar with this expansion. If you guys remember, you're like, oh, we did this in chapter 2. We just did it in limits. Um, and the question is asking, how, how many relative extrema? And if you remember extrema, was just another fancy way for us to talk about those, those peaks and um, the highs and lows of a graph, right? We call it the minimum and the maximums, right? The absolute min, the absolute min, the relative min, the relative um, max, and so on and so forth. So I think the, to remember what that is, obviously we could graph this. This is in our, what we call our linear combination, right? It's written as a product of its linear factors. And that was helpful to identify the zeros as well as the multiplicity of the graph. But if we want to identify the extrema, or the end behavior, or the number of zeros, we got to look at it in standard form, right? We want to understand this as a times x to the n. We want to put it in this form, and then we can understand it. And maybe you, hold on. Maybe you forgot what the, uh, what the number of extrema is in that form. So we'll just review. But first of all, let's put it into that format. Was this negative? That is negative. OK. So we have negative 2x. If I expand x minus 3 squared, my leading term is going to be a x squared. Let's save our time and expand it, just leave it like that. x plus 3 cubed is going to give me a x cubed, right? And then we have an x minus 6. And then hopefully you guys recognize if I multiply all these together, I'm basically just adding my powers, right? And that will give me a negative x to the 7th. It doesn't really matter if we're describing like n behavior. We don't care what the rest of the polynomial is, right? Couldn't we describe what the n behavior is just from this? Yeah. Right? We could say that it rises to the left, falls to the right. And if we had a problem on limits, we could add infinity. We could also describe it from there, right? Same kind of idea. Um, but this one is talking about the number of extrema. And if you guys remember, the um, one thing to understand extrema before we get to extrema, let's remember what else does this format help us. What does that number 7, what does that degree tell us about the polynomial? Uh, that's odd. So it's well, it tells us, yes, it tells us, like, talk about the end behavior. But what else does it tell us about? It has seven zeros, has seven zeros right? The fundamental theorem of algebra, right? The one thing we're like, hey, this is kind of a big deal from this chapter on polynomials. You guys need to kind of remember, like, hopefully you took that from algebra class. The fundamental theorem, this has seven zeros. Does it have seven real zeros? No, right? Um, it's going to, it has seven real or complex zeros, but they all add up to seven, correct? Um, now, the, the important thing is the maximum number, and I think that maybe um, how many relative extrema we want to look at actually the maximum number of extrema. Oh, and actually I did this. So the maximum number of extrema is actually n minus 1. Right? And actually, I read this problem wrong. I apologize for that. Yes? Just right quick. Am I missing something for 101? Just hold on a second. Just let me finish this. Um, so the max, so the degree, so the number of zeros, n equals the number of zeros. And n minus 1 equals the max number of extrema. Right? But it actually just dawned on me when I was talking through this problem. That's actually not going to be our answer. The answer is not 6. We actually need to graph this problem to actually understand it. Because like, extrema is when we change from an increasing to a decreasing, right? or a decreasing to an increasing. So if we look at this, if we graph this, let's count our zeros, actually. Our zeros are at 0, 3. Um, and negative 3, and 6. Wouldn't you guys agree, looking at that? That is our zeros. We did figure out the end behavior, so we did have to do that. That's good. So we still need to understand that's going to rise to the left, fall to the right. But we need to understand the multiplicity. Because just because something crosses doesn't mean it's a, an extrema. So um, let's go ahead and negative 3. So at negative 3, they had a that has an odd multiplicity, right? Because that would be the 0. So that's an odd multiplicity, so it crosses. At 0, 
That's an odd multiplicity, so that crosses. Um, at positive 3, that's an even multiplicity, so that bounces. And then at 6, that's an odd multiplicity, so that crosses. So let's go ahead and check our number of extrema. So we have 1, where it changes from decreasing to increasing. We have 2, increasing to decreasing. 3, and 4. So the answer, the correct answer in this one is 4. Yes? Could you still find that out even if you didn't have the multiplicity? What would you do? Well, I mean, like if you well you've got to be careful because the maximum number of the maximum of extrema is always n minus 1. Mm -hmm. Right? So that would give you an answer of 6. But there isn't 6 extrema here. Oh, okay. So that's why we've got to be careful. With that, the answer is four because as we graph this, you can see there's four different extrema, and the reason why is because you could raise these to the higher higher power. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we we could I could show you different graphs, different ways to do this. Um, well, I'll I'll give you an example after I self-record, but the answer is four D. Um, 